All right, now we're into the next theory here, which is a recent sort of theory, okay, recent-ish. And this is the Bronsted-Lowry or Lowry-Bronsted, depending upon how you want to say it. But this theory here explains why ammonia um, can be basic but has no OH minus OH ions. Remember, Arrhenius's definition was all about water, all about ions being released from the material into the water. And so acids released H plus ions, and of course, the um, bases released OH minus ions. So let's check this one out. Well, the browry lonsted definition um, applies solvents, water, but it also applies to other solvents as well. So the other definitions, you know, Arrhenius's definition, it was water as the solvent. Whereas now we can have different other solvents. We can have ethanol as a solvent. I mean, the fact that um, a lot of people use nail polish remover, so acetone, but there's also ethanol in there as well as the solvent. And perfumes have ethanol as the solvent. And so ethanol is known as the universal solvent. But um, we can't explain the properties of acids and bases in ethanol if we are limited to the Arrhenius' theory. Okay, so uh, we can have nonpolar solvents as well. So that's something you do more when you get to uni, but you can have solvents that are nonpolar that dissolve um, nonpolar molecules. So carbon tetrachloride is a typical sort of one, but we can't ex explain acid based properties in nonpolar solvents using Arrhenius' theory. But also with this new theory now, the Browry Lonsdale theory, we can explain acid-based properties that are not in solution as well. So let's check it out. So what does it say? Well, this theory says that acids are proton donators. They donate a proton and bases are proton acceptors. So if we have water here and we have ammonia, now remember ammonia has no OH minus ion, so according to Arrhenius it shouldn't be a base, but it is. Let's see how. So with this acid here, we have an H plus that's being released from there because it's a proton donor. As it's been released, it's been picked up by ammonia. That means that forms the ammonium ion. So ammonia, when it accepts the proton, becomes the ammonium ion. Now with the browry lonsted definition, there's these new terms called conjugate acids and bases. A conjugate means a partner. Right? In biology, we talk about conjugation, uh, the fact that bacteria can uh, can conjugate or join up with each other in pairs, right, to swap DNA. So to conjugate means to come together, right? Um, and so this is a partner here. And so we have conjugate acid-base pairs. So here is an acid, and when it loses its H+, it forms the conjugate base hydroxide. We're going to do a separate video on acid-base conjugation pairs, so we'll do we'll do more examples of those, but I'm introducing that term for you now. Okay, and so uh, this is the browry lonsted definition. We can now explain, using this definition, the pH of salts, which we're going to get into later and do more detailed descriptions of those and in the lab experiences and measuring pH, etc. But if I just take, if I just take uh, uh, the first one, sodium hydrogen carbonate, for example, right? I've got sodium hydrogen carbonate, and see so that's going to dissolve to give me sodium ions plus hydrogen carbonate ions. He said, "Okay, well, that's all right." But what happens there? Well, the hydrogen carbonate, I'll read right down here. The hydrogen carbonate will react with water very weakly, mind you, and what happens is it acts as a base, and then this. What H plus comes over here to produce H2CO3 plus an OH minus ion. So straight away, we, we know that hydrogen carbonate is a base, and here is our OH minus ion. So it does affect the, the basicity of the solution, but not by releasing an OH minus ion from its structure, according to Arrhenius's definition, but it does increase the hydroxide ion concentration as a result of interacting with the water and accepting a proton from a water molecule. That's the Lowry Bronsted definition. So now we're getting more sophisticated. So here is an example now 
of um, an example how we can explain acid-base properties that are not in solution. And this is a cool demo. Um, this here is a diagram, diagram anyway. So what we do is we have some mineral wool and we have concentrated HCl and we do this in the fume hood for safety. So we've got fume hood there um, in here. We then have mineral wool soaked in very concentrated ammonia. So the fumes of HCl diffuse uh, towards this direction. The fumes of the ammonia diffuse that way. And then where they meet, we see a little white ring formed, a white cloud. And that is ammonium chloride solid. And so what we do, we've got a base here, we've got an acid, and then we have a salt. Right? So this is an example of an acid-base reaction, right? Because the product is um, a substance that has that, uh, that is neutral in pH. We've got an acid and a base there reacting. We've got proton being accepted here and a proton being lost there. So this fits the bronsted lowry definition. Um, it's in the gaseous phase, and this is solid, right? This is in the gaseous phase. So this is not a, considered an acid-base reaction in terms of Arrhenius because there is no water present, there is no ions, there's no H plus ions, there's no hydroxide ions but we have an acid-base reaction according to bronsted lowry right? So if I was to draw this, I'm going to draw this up like this. Right, so there's your ammonia. Here's your HCl. So when that bond you breaks, have a H plus. There it is. And then that H plus gets picked up by the ammonia. You've got two lone pair of electrons there. Those two pair of electrons go to form a bond with the hydrogen. And we call that type of bond a coordinate covalent bond. Okay, sometimes it's called a dative bond. And so what we do is we end up forming the ammonium compound um, ion there, right, NH4 plus. And then of course we have our Cl minus hanging around. And that Cl minus and the ammonium are attracted to each other and that makes us our ammonium chloride. So that's the bronsted lowry definition. We've moved, become more sophisticated. We've become more um, able to describe reactions in a wider context than what we did with the more narrow Arrhenius' definition. Okay, there is another definition that you could uh, explore, which is the Lewis theory of electron acceptors and donors as opposed to protons. Right, electron paired donors and acceptors, but that was for you to investigate further if you want. I'm going to see you in the next video where we explore this concept of um, conjugate acid base pairs. See you then. All right, before we go to the next video, I want you to check out more courses that we have here on our YouTube channel, which are just small snippets from the actual bigger courses that we have on thefliptteacher.com. Of course, with all of our courses, we try to incorporate practical sessions. We have study cards. We have posters that you can print off and stick around your room and do a lot more. We have up to 68 or more videos per course. That's like nine to 10 hours of material that really delve deep into the syllabus and looking at essential content, skills, mathematical manipulations, and a lot more. So if you like that, go over to flipteacher.com and check it all out, and I'll see you in the videos.